Hey guys, welcome to Geo with Mutsuku. In today's video, we are covering the topic of population pyramids. Like, what is a population pyramid? Uh, a population pyramid is simply a special type of graph which shows us the country's population in terms of gender, right? Gender means whether a person is a male or female, male or female, right? So population pyramids show, show, show us a country's population, right? In terms of gender, whether you are male or female, right? Now, these, these are two types. Uh, I have two types of population pyramids, right? The first one is known as a classic triangular pyramid or a progressive pyramid, right? It's a progressive pyramid or a classic triangular pyramid. On this side, I have a rectangular pyramid, right? Or a regressive pyramid. A regressive or rectangular, right? Some textbooks even call it a bell-shaped pyramid. Right? If you look at our two pyramids, they show us two things. Gender, right? Male on this side, female on the other side. If you go to the next pyramid, it shows us gender. Male, female, right? And then there's a line uh, on the side showing us the age groups, right? Right at the bottom, we have zero to four years. So zero, this is when people are born, right? Zero to four years. So at the base of the pyramid is showing us the, the birth rate, how many babies are being born, right? So the base shows us the birth rate and then right at the top, right? Uh, 60, 60 to 64 years, it goes uh, up maybe, let's say until, let's say 75 years plus, right? Plus 75 years. So at the top, that's where we're going to get our uh, death rate, right? We're going to get our death rate. We're going to get old people right at the top, 75 years and above, right at the top. But at the bottom, we have zero to four years. That's, that's our babies, right? And then right in the center, we have our working population, people who are actively working, right? Okay. Now, at the base, we also have the percent. It shows us the percentage, right? The base also shows us the percentage. For example, let's say we are, the, the question asks you, uh, how many females are between the ages of 15 to 19 here is that 15 to 19 here's the bar graph for 15 to 19 you just trace it down here can you see it touches six so we'll say six percent of females are between the ages of 15 to 19 see the base gives us percentage we have two four six right mine, mine is going in intervals of two so if the question asks you how many Females are between the ages of 60 to 64. You go to this bar, you go to this bar, go down, trace it down. This is around, it's between 2 and 4. 3% of females are between the ages of 60 and 40. So my population pyramid shows us age, it shows us gender, and then the base has a percentage, right? Now remember, I call this one the classic triangular pyramid. The next one is the rectangular pyramid. Right? This one is the progressive. This one is the regressive pyramid. Right? Now, these pyramids represent uh, countries, two different countries. Right? The first one, the triangular pyramid, always represents a poor country. It represents a developing country. Triangular pyramid is for a developing country. Whereas the a uh, rectangular pyramid is for a developed country. And now let me explain why, right? If you look at this one here, the base is very broad. It's big. There's a big base, broad base. You see how big it is at the base? It shows us, remember I said the age group here is between zero to four years. It shows us that there's more babies being born. There's a high birth rate, right? High birth rate is associated with poor countries, right? That's where people don't have access or are not aware of family planning, right? In our poor countries, right? There's no woman empowerment. When women are empowered, they will obviously make their own decisions. They will decide to have less babies and focus on their careers. But in the poor countries, there's less woman empowerment. So there's more babies being born. There's a lot of 
unemployment. Unemployment is also associated with a high birth rate in our developing countries. And as you can see, the pyramid becomes very small at the top, which means that there is less old people, which shows us that there is a high death rate. There is more people dying. Can you see that? If the pyramid is big, if the bar is big, it means there is more people. If the bar is small, it means there's less people, right? So, so far, since the base is broad, it means there's a high birth rate. There's more babies being born, right? The top is small, which means there's more people dying. High death rate. You see that there's a high, high, high birth rate, high death rate. The reason why there's a high death rate is because of poor health care, right? People in poor countries don't have access to private health care, right? Don't have access to medical aid, uh, they have poor diets, there's malnutrition, uh, there's food insecurity. You see that uh, they don't have a balanced diet, right? They don't have, they can't afford a gym membership, for example. Not everyone, but most people, right? Remember, it's a developing country, poor country, LEDC, right? But then if you move on this side, this is a population pyramid of a developed country, an METC, right? Uh, if you look at this pyramid, at the base, remember at the base I told you that's where we have our 0 to 4, it's our birth rate, right? As you can see, the birth rate, is, the pyramid is not as big, as, it's not as wide as this one, it's not as broad as this one at the base, right? There's less babies being born. I told you the bigger the pyramid, sorry, the bigger the bar, right? This pyramid is bar, right? The bigger the bar, it means that there's more people there. This one, the bar is not as big as this one, right? Which means there's less babies being born. There's a low birth rate. Why do we have a low birth rate in the developed country, METC? Remember, I spoke about women empowerment, right? In MEDCs, in developed countries, women are more empowered, right? They are more career focused. If a woman is career focused, they will choose not to have a lot of babies, right? But in the developing country, in the poor countries, there's less women empowerment. There's more unemployment, right? There's poor family planning, which leads to a high birth. But on this side, there's, improved, there's better family planning, Right? There's more women empowerment, women make their own decisions, right? So obviously there's going to be less babies being born. Women are career focused. But and then let's go to the top. At the top, at the top, can you see how it's it's bigger? The bar is bigger compared to this one here, right? If the bar is bigger, I told you it means that there is more people there, right? Since this bar is bigger compared to this one, it shows us that there is less people dying. There is a low death rate. You see that? Look at this one. Small bar, more people are dying. There's less people alive. This one, the bar is bigger compared to this one, which means that there's less people dying. There's a low death rate. Why do we have a low death rate in uh, developed countries? There's improved health care people uh, are leading healthy lifestyles they can afford gym memberships uh, medical aid private health care right hence uh, oh there's improved medical facilities remember it's developed countries it's a developed countries an MEDC hence people are able to live longer so there is a low death rate do you see that now LEDC developing countries high death rate more babies being born High death rate, more people are dying, right? And also remember that in, in early disease, there's a high crime rate, there's more crime, hence people don't live longer. Their life expectancy is very low. The average number of years you're expected to live is very low in an LEDC. But in an MEDC, the life expectancy, the number of years you're expected to live is higher. As you can see, there's less people dying, there's a low death rate, right? So MEDC is low, low. LEDC is high, 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 low, low, right? Okay. Now, the reason why I use these ages, you can see I skipped a lot of ages. I just focused on 15 and 64, right? 15 and 64. 
uh, when we look at economically active people, the people who are working, right, to earn an income, in most countries we take 15 to 64. 15 to 64. So people between these ages, between 15 and 64, are considered to be economically active. Right? These are people who are working in the society, right? People between 15 and 64. These are economically active people. They are working to earn an income. They are economically active, right? So let me put a line just to separate. Let me put a line across. Now I'm making I'm, I'm going to make this thing look untidy, right? Let me put a line across, across. Uh, let me move it somewhere there, right? Uh, let me put a line across. Line across, right? Now, now the people between 15 and 64 are considered to be economically active. They are the working population, right? Economically active people, the working population, and then, and then the people below 15 years, below 15, 14 going to zero, are known as dependents. They are the dependents. They are not working, right? Dependents right they are the dependents they depend on the people who are economically active the people who are working even people who are above 64 right 65 and above are considered to be dependents they depend on these people who are economically active right so above 64 dependents below 15 dependents but between 15 and 64 these people are considered to be economically active they are working right and the working population right they're economically active right now this is where we get something known as a dependency ratio remember these ones depend on these people right these ones depend on economically active right now a dependency ratio is the number of um, dependents to the economically active population right it is a population indicator right which compares the number of dependence to the economically active population right now an ledc remember the base is very broad right my drawing is not as is not very accurate right for an ledc there's a lot of babies being born which means there is more dependence right if there is more dependence it means there is a high dependence high high dependency ratio if there is more dependence an ledc a poor country will obviously have more dependence right let me, let me make it bigger right to show you my drawing is not so accurate okay the base is very broad there is more and more babies being born more dependence which means that there is going to be more dependence and less people who are economically active because you can see the pyramid is very thin at the center which means there's less people here i told you if the bars are very long it means there's more people look at this triangular pyramid is very thin it's very narrow let's use the word narrow it's very narrow at the center which means there's less economically active people but there's more and more dependence more and more dependence more babies being born there's a high dependency ratio that's very bad right but if you look at it MEDC, a rich country, the pyramid is very broad at the center. Can you see that? Can you see how this pyramid is getting broad at the center? Unlike this one, which is just narrow at the center. The, the, the rectangular pyramid or the regressive pyramid is broad at the center. It's broad at the center, which means that there is more people who are economically active. And remember, there is a low birth rate, less babies being born. So they are not uh, giving birth to more and more dependents. No, there is a low birth rate, right? If there is a low birth rate, it's showing us that there is less dependency there, right? There is less dependence. So there is a low dependency ratio in an MEDC. Low dependency means there is less dependence. But here there is a high dependency ratio. There's a lot of dependence, right? 
So when we look at uh, population indicators, we also look at the dependency ratio. Dependency ratio. So let's go back and recap one more time. The triangular, the classic triangular pyramid, also known as a progressive pyramid, represents an LEDC, a developing country, right? The, the poor country, such as Zimbabwe, for example, right? And then our rectangular pyramid, also known as the uh, regressive, right? Remember, this one is progressive, right? This one is regressive pyramid, represents a rich country in METC, such as Netherlands, for example, right? There's a low, low, low bed, low dead. LEDCs, high, high, high bed, high death rate, even high dependence. This one also has a low dependence. You can see that? So for ME disease, low, low, low. Low birth rate, low death rate, low dependency ratio. ME, sorry, LEDC, high, high, high. High birth rate, high death rate, high dependency ratio, right? Okay, please just take note that um, the population pyramid of an LEDC shows us a high, high, high. High birth rate, high death rate, high dependency ratio. But there's a low life expectancy. So the low, there's a low life expectancy. Uh, if we go to the population pyramid of an MEDC, which shows us a low, 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 low birth rate, low death rate, low dependency ratio. But it has a high life expectancy. Okay, uh, I just drew a quick sketch of a population pyramid, right? To represent South Africa. Uh, South Africa is also represented by a triangular pyramid. You can see it's a triangular, classic triangular or progressive pyramid. But I wanted us to look at the base, right? Remember, I said the base shows us the birth rate, right? As you can see, the base is very uh, wide, it's very broad. But look at the last part. Can you see how it's becoming smaller? It's not as big as this one, it's getting smaller because there, there are some improvements, right? There are some improvements in the country. It is develop. It is going towards development, right? The birth rate is slightly becoming lower and lower, right? It's still a high birth rate, but as you can see, it's starting to become smaller, right? But just be careful. It's still a triangular pyramid, right? A rectangular pyramid is broad at the center, right? Now this one here. This one here is a rectangular pyramid. Can you see how it's broad at the center? This one here is not broad at the center, right? It's broad at the base. It's broad at the base. But as you can see here, there's some improvements in the better rate. It's become, slightly becoming smaller than the, this one here. I mean, the first bar is the smaller than the second one, right? There are some improvements. Maybe with uh, women, there's some women empowerment. Um, yeah, etc. etc. Uh, population pyramids can change for various reasons, right? They can change for a number of reasons. For example, let's take a look at this population pyramid, which I'm, which I'm going to draw right now. Right? It doesn't, uh, this is just a sketch. If you look at this population pyramid, remember, population pyramid shows us age and it shows us gender, male or female, right? If you look at this one, there is less males and more females, right? This population pyramid can be showing us um, a country's population during times of war. During times of war, for example, remember men go to war and they die. This is how a population pyramid of a country can start looking, right? You'll find that there's less and less males because remember the men go to war. There's more females. But then maybe after the war, you'll find that the birth rate is increasing. The birth rate is increasing because the men are back from war and obviously things are happening, right?